Hey guys and welcome to yet another top tier clash between two ODM clan mates in a glorious civil war on the plains of the dead. On the left hand side representing his favourite wood elves is the mighty Loopy and on the right hand side we have Alfredino and his high elf legions. Should be a really good fun game. It looks like we're going for some traditional wood elf play here with the old triple way watchers. Certainly hard to pull off but someone with Loopy's micro certainly can make it happen. High elves though have plenty of potential counterplay to this as well. So let's delve into this and have a little look at the builds. For the forces of the Wood Elves, it is Triple Waywatcher in the front. No Hawkeye to Drakira, which does, of course, make my little duck heart sink a little bit. But it's still pretty cool to see Waywatchers in action. I know they were hated back in the day for being some of the best snipers in the universe. And they still are very, very powerful. They did have a decrease to their accuracy a little while ago. And it certainly made them considerably less accurate, in my opinion. But they can still do good work, particularly when combined with the Glade Lady and her Prey of an Arf Raymer. It's just so, you know classic at this point you net the opponent key targets lords characters units with the prey of an off raymer then you delete them with the way watchers Main battle line, just a load of eternal guard with shields dotted all the way along with one in reserve as well. And on the flanks, we have Great Stag Knight 2 on this right-hand side. And Great Stag Knights, I say this every single time we have seen them in battle, they look phenomenal. They look so badass, yet mighty at the same time. And the elves kind of power, uh, pale in comparison to the gloriousness of their mounts, but hey, they will try their best to match their ferocity. On the left hand side we have one unit of wild riders and that's going to be it. Wood elves are very expensive and you can't afford too much if you've got triple cavalry as well as triple way watchers. Although we do have a spell singer of life with flesh of stone and earth blood in the center. Now across the dusty plains there is just so many high elves to uh, face here and you can certainly see the wood elves are vastly outnumbered worse than two to one against their pointy eared kin. We have a load of spearmen dotted through the front line as well as silver and guard in the mix and it is just spears and shields everywhere. Lothran C guard as well in that third battle line they can certainly be quite a nice counter in general to all fins wood elf the shield plus bow plus spear combo very deadly up against the squishy wood elves and in the right in the far back we have one two three and four units of the basic archers up in the skies of an archmage of fire on what is a very colorful eagle swooping into battle with burning head flaming sword rune and fireball as well as arcane conduit so a pretty simple um build in general for the high elves but a very very deadly one just going very wide and aggressive going to push forward what are your way watchers going to shoot if they don't have any high value targets to shoot now if i'm the way watchers of course if you can snipe the enemy character that is fantastic but everybody knows pretty damn scary with his micro one of the best players in the game and the archmage is going to stay well away from those way watchers for the majority of the battle i would assume so the best bet is to shoot the lothran seaguard and archers and try to drag them down and then win the frontline engagement by cycle charging with cavalry but there's so many spears on the field that's certainly going to be quite hard now some spearmen have taken a bucket ton of damage in the front They've been uh, trimmed down from 90 models to 75. On the uh, far side, it looks like we have more spearmen getting lit on fire by the Waywatchers. Wild Riders considered going in for a frontal charge on the spearmen, but have unfortunately decided, you know what, it's probably not best for our health, and they decide to pull back. So it was a little bit of bait while the Great Stag Knights slam into the spearmen on the right-hand side and get away without taking too much damage, though there is the Overwatch support of the Lothran Seagull and Archers, so you can see the Great Stag Knights change their course to avoid those arrows that were flying mid-air. Pretty damn good micro by the wood elves so far but likewise the high elves not giving them any good targets kind of every now and again baiting him with the archmage like look i'm here i'm shoot me shoot me and then simply falling back wherever that glade lady gets too close with the prey of an half raymer load more shots do come in raining down on the archers it would seem deleting that unit down to half hp just from one volley is certainly nice work by them as the high elves try to retaliate find more salvos of arrows back towards the great stag knights and if they can soften them up that'd be really tasty for the mid to late stage of the battle where they're certainly doing a lot of cycle charging trying to get into the back line of the high elves and the wood elves are retreating as much as possible the board edge isn't that far away though which of course could be quite problematic for them Waywatchers still have all their models, so I don't really mind this Earth Blood whatsoever. Going to be coming down, healing them up, and trying to keep them in the action as they fall back behind their spear wall. A load of shots once again go down the Lothran Seagull, just a third of your health disappearing, or more like a quarter of the health disappearing with that one volley, which is quite nice. Now, the Great Stags keep desperately attempting to get in there, but look at this. This is a line upon line of spearmen, Silver and Guard, Lothran Seagull protecting the archers. It is really hard for the Stags. They might want to loop all the way up and around behind the enemy, but that does leave your own army a little bit 
bit unprotected with your cavalry, which is something you often want to avoid. Now, the Archmage does take some damage from the Waywatchers, but nothing too crazy. The Wild Warriors do charge into the Spearmen, but they were able to brace in time. And something I'm really looking forward to in Warhammer 3 is we're going to get a little icon telling you when a unit is braced, which is fantastic. And uh, you can see the Wild Warriors actually lose way more HP than the Spearmen there, being driven back by the arrow fire of the High Elves. And the Wood Elves trying to rotate around here as much as possible. You can see their entire force trying to pull back and around. And we do get that Prey of an Alpha go down on the Archmage, and she takes some big damage there. But you can see a load of Waywatcher shots also going wide. Waywatchers are simply not the uh, archers they once were, but still very good. If the Archmage does stagger, that will also help her dodge. But that Preven Arf Raymond did get down to half HP, which certainly isn't bad. Lovely counterplay coming in with the Burning Head to try to drive back the Waywatchers. You can see some big damage going across the board. They do get healed up with an Earth Blood, but one unit unfortunately misses it. That Burning Head still going on into the distance. Now, as the Glade Ladies get turned to get a little bit close to being sniped, she's surrounded by Sovereign Guard right now, and the Waywatchers are desperately trying to drag down the enemy archers. It does look like the Archmage is considering going toe to toe with the enemy general and swooping down. Down. It wouldn't be a bad idea. You can get some massive damage done here, but the Waywatcher support nearby means this is a very dangerous attempt. All the Waywatchers, though, do fire in, and it seems like they kind of miss their mark here. The Archmage is able to survive, though some big damage was done to the Glade Lady. Good play by both players so far. The High Elves really kind of denying as much as possible good engagements for the Wood Elves and a slow pushing forward. We do get some Eternal Guard, unfortunately, having to hold the line now and push back the Spearmen. It is a fight they should win, however. We do get a big fat fireball go down doing some massive damage to the Glade Lady as the Waywatchers once again continue to fall back. Burning Head's going to roast some Eternal Guard, turning that fight in favour of the High Elves, a fight they were normally losing. And you do get the feeling that the High Elves are slowly starting to gain a bit of initiative, but in come the Great Stag Knights, trying to shut that notion down instantly. Massive hits onto the Spearmen, Lothran, Seagull, and Archers, looking to overwhelm this position as quickly as possible, as Eternal Guard continue to rotate as much as possible. Wild Riders going to be slamming into the Silver and Guard, who do seem to be braced, but in the wrong direction. They're now retreating away, and the Wild Riders there come coming out to play, although they are falling back behind another line of spears, so the Wild Riders actually decide to disengage and fall back, trying to loop up and around into the enemy back line. As you can see, the Great Stags with an Earthlight going down on them are quite comfortably deleting the Lothran Seagod and Spearman in the back, doing some really good pressure as the Wild Riders also slamming in a load of the back line. It's just an absolute mess right now for the High Elves, but they do have so many troops that they can form a second firing position here and just constantly just knock, shoot, knock, shoot, just constantly going in and the Great Stags will be going down here. They are rather squishy. We even get a Flaming Sword of Rune go down on the Archers and Lothran Sea God as they bring in more pain in. We do get Great Stag Knights with a Flesh to Stone though, starting to push in to shut them down, which I like quite a bit, but unfortunately they get caught up on something here. I think it's the Lothran Sea God. They need to continue this pursuit because this is a really nasty firing base. The Archmage might even want to dip down to help take down this unit. It looks like that's maybe what she's thinking of doing. Yeah, there she goes, getting that big rear attack on the Great Stags, driving away from the main fight. So it's a bit of a fluster clock here in the back and in the front. Looks like the Way Watchers are being protected rather nicely here. And the Eternal Guard trying their best to force back the Silver Guard, but the Silver Guard will be continuing to push through. And they're actually getting engaging combat now with the Waywatchers. A little bit of a miss micro there by the Wood Elves. There's so much going on, you can't really blame them. Silver Guard have been dragged apart and finished off. The Glade Lady probably wants to use the majority of her ammo on the Archmage, trying to snipe them off the battlefield as much as possible. You can see that the uh, Great Stag Knights, as well as the Wild Riders, are charging onto the Archers, looking to overwhelm them. Should be enough to finish them off, and that actually shatters that unit, opening up the back gate as well to all these other units of Archers. The Tunnel Guard getting nice and aggressive, driving towards the enemy to try to also apply a little bit of pressure and help out the cavalry, which at the moment is in a lot of the heavy lifting itself. The Glade Lady continues to poke down the Archmage, having to duke fireballs, which can be rather nasty. Archmage does go down on the Great Stags. Now, this is a little bit scary because the Great Stags have slaughtered the Archers. Now, do they continue their pursuit to rear charge the enemy, or do you surround the Archmage? It looks like we're getting a enough Raymer. I would take my Great Stags and continue to pursue the Archers and rear attack the Lothran Sea Guard, allow the Glade Lady to deal with the Archmage, which it looks like is just what Loopy is planning to do. Now, the Eagle does try to fight back, but oh my god, what a clobbering! Such a sad sight 
tight as well. The eagle upturned on its belly in a uh, submissive position, unfortunately getting dragged down there. Lofren Seagull will now be surrounded. Great Stags need to take this opportunity to hammer into the rear of these forces whilst the anvil of the Eternal Guard pinned the enemy in place. Take advantage of the low leadership of the High Elves now that their Lord is dead. Glade Lady is going to pursue the Lofren Seagull on the very edge of the battlefield alongside the Spell Singer Life. Hopefully this will push off the archers as well as break the Lofren Seagull. The Wood Elves certainly feel in a lot better than they did earlier on. But the Wave Watchers are pretty much all out of ammunition there. They used to chase off troops now. Wave Watchers aren't garbage in melee. They're not designed for it. They're not great at it, but they're not terrible. Particularly if they can rear attack and surround the enemy. A ton of guard are trying to hold back silver and guard. So they're going to be very problematic in the latter stages of the battle here for the Wood Elf forces. We can see the great stags are just so beaten up at this point. They actually break just chasing down spearmen, which is a bit of a disaster. Way Watch has been used to shatter units. I love to see that in play. A ton of guard are driving back spearmen as well. Now we did get a big fat earth blood go down. We are heating up great stag knights as well as wild riders. There's not that many models left for them though. Lofren Sea Guard, every single Great Stag they can kill is a massive boon to them. Spearmen are holding back a ton of guard as well as the Way Ultras rather well here. The Eternal of Guard in the center as well, struggling up against the Spearmen. But in come the cavalry now. The cavalry is going to be so important to the end stage of this battle. They're going charging downhill. Those big old stag antlers just gorging out the stomachs of the High Elves and just entangling them in a painful death. But the Lofren Sea Guard, they still hold firm, give credit where credit is due. And the Great Stags are actually the ones who are starting to waver despite getting these big charges off. Every time they retreat and pull back, they're met by just a torrent of arrows coming in. They're being driven back up the hill and both units of Great Stag Knights break at the same time. In fact, one unit shatters whilst the other breaks and that is a massive victory there for the High Elves. In the distance, the Wild Riders are chasing off Spearmen with their Way Watcher allies. They certainly need to come back. Balance power, very, very even. Now, the Glade Lady still has decent ammunition, so she can pop shots down the ranks and hopefully kill a couple of models per shot, which I would certainly love to see. Unfortunately for the Spell Slinger, she doesn't have any aggressive spells, but can, of course, use those Earth Bloods on Eternal Guards and hopefully allow them to turn the tides of battle in the melee fight, which is currently going in the favor of the High Elves. Now, the Glade Lady simply kiting back and forth where possible, looking to pop shots in with her bow and hopefully absorb as much ammunition as well. The Way Watchers are pushing to combat. Spellsinger Life is very, very precariously uh, uh, kind of on the dangle on the edge of a knife, unfortunately, down to just 459 HP. We do have Wild Riders returning to the forefront of the battle, offering Seaguard once again getting a nice volley off. A big charge comes down here, though, trying to break the High Elves. That's the main hope here of the Wood Elves, is to break their opponent rather than kill them. Lofren and Seaguard do get uh, a rather nasty net placed upon them, though there's not that many shots coming in. The Glade Lady is going to start charge and actually break them, but because they're locked in place, they're not going to be going anywhere. Wild Riders continuing to try to drag down the these pesky Lofren and Seaguard have been so problematic for the Wood Elf forces. And look at this. The Silver and Gold won their engagement over on this far side and are now pushing in with some nice reinforcements. Though we do have 62 Eternal Guard, which shouldn't, certainly shouldn't be uh, kind of counted out yet. We have 36 Way Watchers in the distance and some more Eternal Guard who can come back to the main fight. The Glade Lady is so low HP now. She has broken the Lofren Seaguard. It looks like some more of the uh, forces are wavering, but it is the Wood Elf forces wavering here with the Eternal Guard. Glade Lady being chased off once more. Spell Singer of Life as well, not looking too great. Now, this is a really tough situation. What do you do with the Glade Lady? You uh, don't want to get her killed, but you want to get her in action where possible. The chase off enemy routing you with the Way Watchers wouldn't be the worst shot in the world, but like we just literally rotate around, use your bow, shoot down the ranks here of the Sylvan Guard and try to finish them off. The Spearmen are less of a problem. They're far more susceptible to breaking in the late game, as well as just not being anywhere near good melee combatants. So I love this shooting shots into the Sylvan Guard, try to break them and allow the Eternal Guard to really shine because it is such a messy game so far. And the Lofren and Sea God actually get enough distance between them and the Way Watchers to outrun them. And that is massive having these troops back. Now, the Way Watchers look so freaking cool the way they kind of dance around with their blades looking to carve apart the enemy. And as I said before, not the worst stats. 29 melee attack, 29 melee defense here isn't uh, too terrible against the Lofren and Sea God, who do once again break. So it looks like the Way Watchers were able to uh, shatter that already weakened resolve here. 
Way Watchers do charge down the Lofton Sea Guard. Looks like the main fight was lost for the Wood Elves. The Eternal Guard being the only ones left fighting up to 79 kills, but simply being swarmed by the, the pure numbers of the enemy. More Eternal Guard are going to be coming back. The Glade Lady once again goes into the threat up to 50 kills so far. Been very impressed with the Glade Lady play, but likewise, the High Elf player has just denied, denied, denied constantly the entire game. Good engagements for the Wood Elves, and they have struggled because of that. Lothra and Seagard have been broken. Once again, more Lothra and Seagard actually rally once more in the distance. And this time, they're the ones forcing back the Way Watchers and driving them from the field. So that is 19 Warriors who can come back to the main fight. And they still have ammunition, still six of volleys. And they are shooting those volleys over towards the Glade Lady, trying to whittle her rather small HP down even more. Only 470 on her at the moment. Good play here by the high off player, just using the Spearman and the Sovereign Guard. Chase away the Tunnel Guard. There is no reason to allow these troops to come back. Just push that bounce power more and more in your favor. And it is heavily in favor of the high elves right now. So Lofra and Sea Guard are not the most accurate, unfortunately, for Alfredino here and connecting with the Glade Lady, who does manage to connect with them, though, pretty hard charging. Though a load of spears are brought out. You can see a few arrows sticking from her shoulder and bloody in one of the eyes of her horse. And she is so low to break in here, so close. Lofra and Seagard do actually do a couple of parting shots before the Waywatchers are able to shut them down. And the Glade Lady down to just shy of 300 HP is forced from the battle. A shatter, though, comes down on the Lofra and Seagard. And is the Glade Lady going to rally? She's negative 10 leadership right now, which is certainly not good. And she shatters the Waywatchers. Simply do not have it in them. And then it's going to be a valiant defeat for the forces of the Wood Elves. A very Pyrrhic victory for the High Elves. That was a close scrap indeed. Well played to Loopy. Well played to Alfredino. Always good to have these guys on the channel. They play some fantastic games. So well played to both of them once more. And uh, that was uh, close. That was very, very close. There's one or two pivotal moments. Of course, the Archmage going down was nasty. But Alfredino managing just to drag down those great stags and use up all the ammunition on the Waywatchers in kind of the early to mid game was really quite class as well. Waywatchers... 109, 100, and 154 kills. Damage value 1.4, 1.4, and 1.6. Nearly 1.7k damage value there. So they all perform really good. But once they're out of ammunition, the Wood Elves slowly ran out of steam. Hope you guys enjoyed this game. I'll delve very quickly into the damage value and kills of all the units in just a second. But if you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe, like, and comment. All three fins massively help out the channel. Bucket ton of links down below in the description to Twitch, to Patreon, to Discord. Loads of good stuff. Discord is where you submit replays to get them cast on the channel. Without further ado, let's delve into the build. So the Glade Lady, 1,735 damage value, using up all her ammunition and uh, generally using up her private life ramers to good effect as well. Pretty impressed with her play throughout the course of the battle. Spellsinger, only 83 damage value, but some nice heals. The Eternal Guard, 535, 42, 437, 300, and 383 damage value, which is okay across the board. Their main job, of course, just to protect that Archer Core. Not that big kills, 83 being the standout, of course, 69 also being a big standout. We've gone over the Waywatchers already. Wild Riders, 103 kills, 600 damage value. Great Stag Knights, 124 and 87 kills, 1.1k damage dealt, and 985 on the second unit. As for Alfredino, the Archmage, despite taking considerable damage and being in a really tricky situation, still got 1,309 damage value, doing some really glorious work there, some nice burn heads as well to roast some of the Eternal Guard. Spearmen, of course, aren't going to get massive kills, although one unit got 83, which is a standout. Damage value-wise, 247, 149, 226, 146, and 1,004. So this one unit, of course, fighting cavalry for prolonged moments of combat. Sovereign Guard is such a nice pick here. I really love them in this matchup. That magic resistance helps against Drides as well. 38, 11, and 104 kills with 582, 195, and 968 damage value. As for the archers, they're cheap, they're cheerful, and they didn't get that many kills. Zero. Zero. 1 and 11, 220, 147, 208, and 716 damage value. Good play with the cavalry to shut them down, but you cannot shut down the Lothran Sigurd that easily with cavalry. Particularly Wood Elf cavalry, which is, tends to be lightly armored. Those spears really do pack quite a punch. 11, 3, 12, 40, and 28 kills, but damage value-wise, 886, 757, 715, 1, 1,799 and 1,630. My god, those Lothran Seaguard certainly paid for themselves. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Until next time, peace, peace. And as always, stay awesome.